I painted more than 100 portrait paintings. All were commissioned. There are never any failure. So, I think based on that uh, experience, I'm qualified to speak about it, how to paint portrait successfully. Actually, most of the art students face the problem painting a background more than a face. First, they know what values are there. Values means light and darks. How much light and dark is there? How to maintain it? How to manage it? This way or that way, they do it. Of course, there are some technical intricacies which they don't know or realize what they are missing when they do portrait. I am not going into those matters. I am limited myself only to paint a background, which is crucial. Actually, what they do is when they paint a portrait after finishing the face or before working the face, they paint background. They think if the picture is a little bit light, they think painting a dark background will bring the face out. Vice versa, when picture is dark, that means the face is dark, they paint a light background. Same way they think, because dark against light, the picture will come out. In fact, it's a wrong notion. Because this portrait is not consists of two parts or divided into two parts. It is one, it's one, it's a whole. So when you separated background from the figure, when you think background is different from picture, it appears as two parts to the viewer, then the portrait fails. Because in life, you see the person simply his appearance. We won't see his background. Come on, think of it. Do you see any person's background along with him? No, I don't think so. So why you have to paint them when we paint a portrait, a background as a separate space? It leads to failure. You have to see the whole picture as a whole. How to see it as a whole, which things will play the key role in this regard. Technically, how to make them interact with each other, how to give a feeling of whole, this is I am going to explain in this picture. And in this applications, in this approach, mainly tonal colors, values, color influences, reflections will play the key role. I am going to explain them in next pages. This is the one of my books I had written on painting. This book is exclusively about how to capture movement in portrait painting. In the next pages, I am going to explain to you about the painting background for portrait painting. Painting background is the biggest problem for an art student. In this video, I will explain in a short and simple approach. I hope it will guide you to understand how to paint a background for a portrait painting. 
you may not understand in one attempt. So try to study and absorb it many times. You will understand it finally. The great secret of painting backgrounds for portrait painting. Absorb the picture. Absorb the picture. Do you see the figure or the background? Again, do you see the figure or the background? Absorb. Your focus would be on the figure and the background would be in your peripheral view. Again check it. Your focus would be on the figure and the background would be in your peripheral view. This you would experience when you see this picture. Am I right? Just think about it. Look at this grey toned image. Middle and less lighter values in the figure and values in the background are the same. Again, I am telling you, look at this grey toned image. Middle and less lighter values in the figure and values in the background are the same. So, this value relation helps to experience the picture as a whole. As a whole. Then, we won't feel background is a separate space. Remember this lost life. Then we won't feel background is a separate space. Look at the point where edge of the face meets the background. This is the most crucial area to achieve unity in painting. Here, if your approach is not right, it will kill the unified effect in painting along with movement. To achieve unity and movement, absorb what I have done there. You will find not much to distinguish between the edge of face and background. You will find not much to distinguish between the edge of the face and background. You can see this more clearly in black and white. I made sure tonal values of both areas are very close to each other. The same way I planned tonal color of the background to be close to the tonal color of the light side of the face. Again I am repeating. I planned the tonal color of the background to be close to the tonal color of the light side of the face. That way, viewer won't feel separation between background and face. This in fact brings unity and movement. If he feels separation between face and background, it leads to loss of unity and movement. The eye will stop where the separation happens. Tonal color and value play a crucial role here. If you want to be a good portrait artist, it's important to understand tonal color and its value. Look at the wedge where the figure and background meet. Look at the edge where the figure and background meet. You won't feel any significant separation in that space. This is the secret of portrait painting when you work background. This principle applies whether the values are lighter, middle or darker. Again, I am repeating, 
this principle supplies whether the values are lighter, middle or darker. In this image, you can see the values on the forehead and chin, numbers 1 and 2, equals the value in the background even though tonal curves are different. Again, I am repeating. In this image, you can see the values on the forehead and chin marked as number 1 and 2 equals the value in the background even though tonal colors are different. Even though tonal colors are different. Again, I am repeating. Even though Tonal colors are different. Note this line. It's very important. These things will bring harmony, unity and movement into the painting. Result is figure and background would appear as one. It gives the feeling of whole. It gives the feeling of whole. This is very, 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 very important to get that feeling of whole. That means your portrait painting is successful. Look at the values at numbers 1 and 2 in this grey value image. The values on forehead and chin are approximately same. The values on forehead and chin marked as numbers 1 and 2 are approximately same. This is the secret to achieve a whole effect when painting a portrait background. Question yourself. Have you ever seen any person along with his background at any time? Have you ever seen any person along with his background at any time? You are able to see only one thing at a time. Then, why should you bring his background into focus? Think about it. Every color influences the surrounding colors. If we know this fact, it will help us to bring color harmony, unity, and the movement into paintings. Observe the places I marked out in the figure. For example, number 4, the background blue-gray is reflected in a very subtle way on the jaw near the ear. Observe it. Watch it. How the blue-gray in the background reflected on the jaw of the figure, very subtle way, very subtle way. Not only there, look at the five, number five, how the background color reflected on the hair. Look at the number two, how the sari light grey colour reflected under the chin. Watch that very subtle grey, white grey on the, under the chin. Same may look at the number 3. How the background blue colour, background blue grey reflected on the shoulder. Check it. Carefully watch it. You will know how they reflected on the figure. How the color influences the surroundings. You will watch it. You will know it with observation. These kind of reflections takes place everywhere if we observe carefully. 
again remember this these kind of reflections takes place everywhere if we observe carefully for example observe a house or a tree or a person standing in outdoors all these objects are affected by skylight and sky color the same way sitting in interiors near colored light that color of light will reflect on the person put two different colored plastic buckets near each other put two different colored plastic buckets near each other i hope it's not a problem to you to put two plastic buckets near each other experiment it see it then you can see their reflection on each other this is the law of reflection this is the law of reflection in portrait painting also the same law applies without ruining the object's basic color you can play with these reflections getting used to these kind of applications will take time remember no one could have achieved great things without struggle success follows only the one who struggles remember everything is affected by its surroundings question yourself question yourself have you tried to understand seriously about reflections did you know they will make or break a painting did you know they will make or break a painting come on think of it i hope you have understood it what i explained to you remember this is a long journey it will take so much time to understand it properly you have to watch it you have to study it you have to think about it many 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 times slowly you are able to understand it then you will be able to apply it practically in your portrait painting if you are patient enough that day will come